Another week in Florida, hopefully the weather's a little bit warmer this week and um, nice to catch up with everybody again after a break. It doesn't seem that long ago since we finished up in Tiburon. It's been probably the shortest off-season I've ever had. It's, it's been a pretty quick turnaround, but nice to sort of keep things rolling and um, build up the momentum for last week. And then, you know, speaking of the break, how'd you spend it? Did you work on some golf, see some family? You know, what, what'd you do? I went home for three weeks, which was pretty nice. Um, about as long as I, I get at home, so nice to catch up with everybody. And I suppose Christmas is one of those nice times where everybody's at home, everybody's off work, and um, good food, good people, and um, sort of recharge the batteries a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, different course, but you know, you won this event in 2022 in Florida. So, you know, what is it about this event, maybe, that you know, kind of brings out your game? And what do you kind of remember about about that win? Yeah, I mean, Fort Myers not too far away from here. Um, this golf course is a little bit different, but also some similarities, I think. It's obviously a Don Ross design. Um, it's been pretty clear from the get-go this week that hitting greens is going to be really apparent this week. Chipping is very tricky with the dormant Bermuda around the greens and, and things like that. So it's going to be windy, I think. Um, a little bit gusty. A, a lot like Fort, the conditions in Fort Myers, actually, at Crown Connolly. So um, managed it pretty well two years ago. So hopefully I can sort of emulate that again. Yeah, about then. Hello. Did, did you and your coach kind of dive into stats at all at the end of the year? Did, did he come to, to Florida and spend some time with you? Um, I mean, stats are something I think we sort of are checking in with all the time. Um, I think with the, the fantastic thing with the, the new KPMG stats is that you're always, you can compare yourself to the average and the best in the field, but also to yourself as well. And I think it's a lot of the time it's seen what made the difference on the weeks that you did well versus the weeks that maybe you finished 20th or 30th. So um, my driving accuracy stats were a lot better last year. Um, didn't quite, proximity hold wasn't quite as good as it needed to be. So I need to sort of tighten that up a little bit. And um, I mean, for me, it, the weeks that I put the best are usually the weeks that I do well. So um, it was it was pretty evident from like ball stroll and Meyer and those weeks what what made everything go well. So it's just a case of, I know what to do. It's just a case of doing it more often. <laughs> and and have you thought about how to bottle up what you feel at the Solheim Cup and and put it in a week-to-week -week basis? Yeah, I mean, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? I, I, I've got asked this a lot. I think if I knew the answer, I'd, I'd do it every week. I think Solheim's just a special week. I think match play, I, I mean, I love match play. I love team golf. There's something about the Solheim Cup that that brings something out in, in everybody. But I think you're a little bit more aggressive maybe in the Solheim. Um, I mean, it, match play, you can kind of go for things. It doesn't really matter if you miss that putt or one hole is one hole. So it's it's a little bit of a different mentality. But yeah, I mean, if I can tap into that a little bit more this year, it'd be, uh, be pretty nice. Yeah, go for it. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about your the ability to read these greens being so important. Um, how much do you rely on your caddy for that? For reading greens? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm sure I doesn't read my clock. At all? At all. Just so it, is this an aim point mostly? Yeah, I'm mostly aim, but I mean, these greens are pretty grainy. Um, it, it's pretty clear out there where the grain is. Um, there's a lot of color change and, and stuff like that. So it's, I mean, it's, it's different going from Nona, obviously, with the overseed last week to, to here. The greens are very slick. I mean, if you get above the pin this week, you're, it's, it's going to be really tricky. Um, there's going to be no guaranteed two pots unless you're below the hole this week. So uh, lots of break, lots of, lots of speed. So um, putting and chipping, you can make your dive very difficult or very easy, depending on where you hit it into these greens. And if I could just ask one more, um, since it's the Solheim Cup year, could you take us back to what it was like after the 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 win, the tie that really was a win? <laughs> um, what what the celebration was like that night, and and how much it kind of carried on that feeling through the season? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a there's an incredible amount of adrenaline after after Solomon. It's it's such a high, and um, it's funny, like in the couple of days that. The week of, I never felt tired. I felt like I could have played five more rounds, and, and you're just so excited to be there. You're feeding off the energy of the crowd with your teammates. It, it's it's such a fun week, and celebrations after, and um, I suppose, obviously, with the everything being so dramatic and how it finished, and Carlotta and the King of Spain being there and, and everything, it was, um, I mean, the the whole team, it was, it was nice to celebrate with everybody, and I think that's what makes Solheim unique is 
lot of the time when you win, it's you're on to the next event, and you're you're there with your caddy, and you most of the time celebrate by yourself. Everybody's gone, uh, apart from a few people that maybe hang around to to spray you with water or whatever it is at at the back of the 18th, where Solheim is. You're there with your 12 teammates, the caddies, all the backroom team, friends, family. So it's a lot bigger celebration, um, which is nice. And I think that's one of those things in sport, I suppose. You, you spend so long chasing wins and chasing all this. You don't actually sometimes get to enjoy it as much as it's always on to the next one, on to the next one. So I think the nice thing I found with Solheim is you actually take a little bit more time to enjoy it. Um, and then it's, it is weird going. I remember going back to Arkansas the next week, and it's you hit a shot and you're waiting for the crowd to cheer and roar and it, it just doesn't happen. There's only a few people behind the green. So it's it's definitely a little bit of a come down. It's a little bit flat the weeks after and you're trying to get yourself going again. But um, yeah, it's a lot of fun to be a part of. My last one, since it's an Olympic year, how have you, in your mind, how do you see the Olympics um, in terms of how big they are and what they mean to golf? How much has that grown, do you think? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, it's been fantastic for golf to be a part of it. I think a lot of people tune into golf in the Olympics that wouldn't normally watch golf. Um, I mean, it's the biggest sporting event in the world. Um, I know different people debate whether it should be pro or amateur or things like that, but I mean, it's, it's a huge honor to represent your country and there's no bigger stage than the Olympic Games. And um, myself and Stephanie Meadow have represented Ireland these past few times. We were, we've been chatting about it. Rio was a little bit not quite a full experience of a games with Zika and everything that was going on. Tokyo was obviously a very different game, so it feels like Paris will almost be our full experience of, of an Olympic Games, and it's obviously in Europe this year, so hopefully a few more friends and family can go, and um, Le Golf National is obviously an iconic venue from, from the Ryder Cup and, and all of that, so it's it's something that's definitely circled on the calendar and, and really looking forward to it. and. Um, I, I just love the camaraderie with the other athletes as well. I think being from Ireland, it's one of those smaller teams. Everybody knows each other. You're cheering for everybody. We typically don't win that very many medals. So when someone does win a medal, it's, there's a lot of excitement. Everybody comes back and you sort of celebrate with everybody. So it's, there's a nice sense of, of team spirit that week that you don't normally get. So it's, it's, it's a fun week. Jason, you got anything? Just one last one for me. Um, obviously, capture your second win. Um, Beth Ann alluded to great Solheim Cup. Um, you know, just kind of how would you surmise your, your 2023 season and how much of that will you take away as you head into 2024? What are some goals you have for this season? Yeah, I think just more consistently, I think getting myself into contention more often. Um, I think the, the good stuff was really good and just trying to do that more often, especially in the majors and, and week in, week out. So if I can if I can kind of bottle that for, for a bit more, obviously it's, it's going to be a, a huge summer, a really busy summer with four majors, Olympics, Solheim in packed quite into a, a short amount of time so I think it's everybody's going to be trying to peak at, at that point so um, just making sure everything's ready to go by the time those summer months roll around and, and put myself in contention as, as much as I can leading up to that. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.